my name is Bill, and this video is about raising butterflies. In this first part, we learn about finding female butterflies and telling them from males, and when and where to find them. Later on, we learn about catching them and getting their eggs, and some of the tricks and materials for keeping them alive. We're only going to study the main things about raising butterflies, because a person could study this stuff for years and still have a lot to learn. But the video is only 25 minutes long. So, here's my friend Chloe. If we're going to raise butterflies, we will have to tell the females from males because like chickens, only the females lay eggs. Like people, there are a few ways to tell the difference. The first way is by the way they look, and the second is by the way they act. If those don't work, the third way is by putting them all together in a big cage and letting them sort it out. But you'll have to have at least one male and one female. So, going by the way they look, here are some ways to tell most butterflies. A male monarch is easy to identify because they have these dots on their lower wing. These dots contain scent that the male uses to identify himself to the female. She can tell from the scent how healthy or worn out he is, and the females will prefer the healthiest males for mates. The female ID is just as easy because she doesn't have the dots. This is a male and female monarch. These are a good example of some general differences in appearance that can be extended to most kinds of butterflies everywhere, all species. Males are brighter in color, and females tend to be a bit duller, darker, grayish, or cream color. Male upper wings are slightly narrower and more pointed, the females more rounded. Males are smaller in size overall, and the females are larger. Males often have some sort of scent patch, though it's not always visible in every species. With some species, the male and female look like two completely different kinds. Here on the left side are all females. The right side are the males of those same species. This difference actually makes it easier to tell females from males for these kinds, since we have to identify our butterfly anyhow to get the right plant for her to lay eggs on. This means getting a reference book from somewhere like a bookstore or the library and looking up their picture. Most reference books on butterflies also list their host plants too. Or you can surf around on the internet because there's lots of butterfly websites. This might take a while though so you can shorten your research time by looking only for butterflies from the area where yours was caught. With all these butterflies we've just seen, it's easy to tell the females from the males. Unfortunately that's not the case with most butterflies, but still there are ways to tell. The Nymphalidae are the largest group of butterflies in the world, and most of them don't show any difference between males and females by the way their wings are marked. They all stand on four legs instead of six, and they're also called the brush-footed butterflies because their front feet are small and fuzzy, and they hold them up sort of like a praying mantis. These front feet are specialized for tasting, and used mostly by females for finding the best host plant. So, if you should ever see some butterfly fiddling its tiny front feet on a leaf, it's probably a female. This is an illustrated cross-section of a male and female butterfly abdomen. The one on the left is a male. The one on the right is a female. She's larger because she's full of eggs. This female pipefly swallowtail is so full of eggs, she can't bend her abdomen enough to deposit any eggs on that plant shape. That's what she's trying to do. We know she's a female for several reasons. Because she has a fat abdomen, she's dancing on the host plant, and because her coloration looks like a female pipevine swallowtail that we looked up in a book. We also look up the host plant of this butterfly so we can identify it too when we see it. So any butterflies hanging around this kind of plant, looking like this, acting like this, will probably be females of this kind. There are still a few more ways to tell female from male butterflies. One is the same method we use for puppies and wolverines. We look under their tail. Now here we have to know what we're looking for because puppies and butterflies just don't have a lot in common. This is a molytic crescent. This here is the crescent. And this is a female. These are a couple of painted ladies, which belong to the Nymphalid family. The one on the left is a male. The right one is a female. 
This is the same female from the side. Most brush-footed butterflies are not this easy to determine. We just got lucky with this one. Here's the male. While we're here, count the legs. There's another group of butterflies that people like to raise because they're big and showy. These are the swallowtails. There's a bunch of divisions in this group, and each division eats a different host plant, but they all have the same physical differences between the males and females. The females look like the others we just showed. They have an opening that goes sideways across here. This part lays the eggs. Male swallowtails, though, are different from any other group of butterflies. The end of their abdomen looks like a clamshell with two halves. So that's the first way to tell the difference between males and females by the way they look. When scientists find one, and they can't tell the difference, but they really have to know, they do an autopsy with a microscope. But this makes a mess of them, and dead butterflies don't lay eggs. So we try to tell the difference by the way they act. And we already know how to do this, because butterflies act a lot like people. First, we'll do the males. Our real interest in males is in the way they behave when a female is around. In the wild, we see about six times more males than females because males spend their time literally chasing anything that moves, while females spend their time either in hiding or trying not to attract attention. But that contrast in behavior will point out the female like a flashing sign if you know what to look for. The main thing males do with their time is to cruise or perch where he can watch his turf and look for females. If anything suspicious flies by, he jumps up to check it out. Here's our hero. He's a Lorcan's Admiral perched in an apple tree. I'm going to throw this stick for a decoy, and if that Admiral's a male, he'll probably chase it. Here goes. Look at that. Not every male will chase, but females never chase. And he even returned to his same perch. I'm going to do that again. There he goes. Another thing that females almost never do is sit around and drink wet mud. This is a male thing, and it's thought that they get minerals or electrolytes this way because male butterflies expend energy more quickly. It's unknown how they all identify the right spot, but if one just cruises on by and doesn't join the rest, that one is probably female. These are pipe vine swallowtails. The ones flying low to the ground are females looking for host plant, and the ones tearing around overhead are several males all patrolling the same territory. You and I can't tell them apart from here, but the butterflies know, so we watch them to see how they behave. Butterflies communicate by scent, so these male swallowtails can tell that the female isn't interested. But these buckeyes will persevere like heroes. So much, in fact, that female nymphalids have tricks to dump pesky males. Here she takes off straight up, and when she gets up about 30 feet, she turns and goes straight down. That's the male up there wondering where she went. All right, here's the test. Can you tell which of these butterflies is the male and which is the female? And last, and maybe most important, if you go out looking for female butterflies, is when to find them. And the very best time is the first day or two after a rain or cool weather because cool weather keeps butterflies from flying and it also keeps cocoons from hatching so all the cocoons that would have hatched during the cool weather will all hatch at once and all those butterflies will be out looking for other butterflies and flowers and the females won't be in hiding and the very best time on any day is when the sun is highest between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon when the air is warm